Hello, this is Andy Schaefer's application engineer at Acuity. We're talking about adaptive milling again today, and I've got to start with a correction. Last week I created a video, and at the end of the video I indicated that with an adaptive milling toolpath, you could use a UDE to turn your cutter comp on and off. And while that's basically true, Siemens has contacted me and informed me that in fact that's not recommended. The reason is that their algorithm is calculating that chip thickness using the actual nominal value of the tool and even though cutter comp works it creates a situation where as the comp value gets larger you get an increasing error on that chip thickness calculation. It's no longer working the way it's supposed to and in fact you can break tools. So that leaves us in kind of a, a difficult position. Uh, what are we going to do in a workflow where we wish to utilize reground tools? We're going to have tools of different diameters that we want to use for these roughing operations and we're not going to use comp to uh, accommodate those different diameters. Well, it's pretty easy to imagine, uh, you know, just changing your program uh, for a different diameter, outputting the different roughing routines, and then connecting them, you know, as sub-programs somehow. But uh, there's potentially a, lo a lot of problems there. Uh, first of all, it's uh, time consuming. It's going to take a long time to make all those programs. And then secondly, and maybe more important, uh, there's just a lot of chance for error. How do you make sure that when the, uh, the operator has selected, uh, say, a reground tool that's 10 thousandths undersized, that he ends up running the right sub-program for that tool? So I decided to give this a try and see if I could use some of the automation in NXCAM to create more of a management system that would make it easier to create the sub-programs, assign the tools, and then follow through the whole process with the final uh, machine code to make sure that the correct tool gets assigned to the correct sub-program. So this video is really a demonstration of the concept that I've just created over the weekend. It certainly isn't a finished product. Here's what I utilized in creating this. Uh, the dialogues that you'll see, there's two of them. I created those using the UI block styler. That's an option for NX. And then in the background, I'm using Python to work with the object model in NX, but it could have been any of our binding languages. Uh, as you've seen, there's already an adaptive milling operation that's been created. Also, I've got uh, a floor wall with a face mill to take off the top, and then a finish pass here with a little larger tool. Uh, that's our third operation. Okay, so the first step then is to create the other tools that we would want to use in our management of our reground process. So first then, I'll select a, uh, a journal here. That's This is a Python journal. Uh, again, this is part of the UI block styler uh, output. And I need to select the tool from which my copies will be made. Next, you can see it's remembered my settings from the last time I ran this, but the delta here is essentially the, the diameter value that I'm taking off. So my first reground tool will be 10 thousandths undersized, my second will be 20, and the third tool that I'll create, uh, obviously you would never actually regrind a tool this far, but I want to make a substantial difference just so you can see it demonstrated that it's really working correctly. So the third tool will take down 100 thousandths. Now this is a, a half inch tool, so this final tool will be 400 thousandths. Then we'll just click OK, and you see that it creates those uh, other tools here and renames them. Uh, the other thing that it's doing is it's looking at uh, the tool number and the adjust register and changing those. So here we're at half an inch, four and four, and let's look at the next tool down, tool one here. So here it's four nine, remember we wanted a 10 thousandths regrind, and it's incremented the tool number and the adjust register. Okay, now the next step then is to actually create the sub-programs that we will need. That's the other journal that 
I'm going to uh, execute using this button. And here I need to select the top level program. And I'll expl explain why that's important here in a couple of minutes after we've executed it. Next, we want to select the operation for which we want to create subprograms. And then finally, we want to select the tools. And what we're going to do in this uh, journal then is to take each tool that I'm selecting and we will assign it to the adaptive milling operation, regenerate, and then post-process the output. So our expectation then is that when we get done, we're going to have four different operations. It's using a special post-processor that I created just to make these little sub-programs, and that's named here. Uh, here's the folder for my output, and my starting number will be 1001. That's going to be for the nominal tool, and then it'll number on down for the, the other three. So again, we are expecting to have four sub-programs when we complete this. This is kind of blocking the screen here, but you can see it regenerating each time it reassigns a tool. And in fact, you can probably kind of see the... Uh, okay, oh, here we are complete. So the operation is now assigned to this other uh, number three reground tool. Let's go look at the results here. Okay, so we're in our folder, and it has in fact created these four different files and you'll notice that number four is quite a bit larger than the others and I think that's expected remember this is a much smaller tool so it's going to have more passes because the step over is predicated on the diameter of the tool okay so why did I why did we need to select the program when we ran that operation uh, the reason is that when we get to the final post-process, we need to have some logic there at the front of the program that the operator can then put the correct tool in and then have the correct sub-program automatically selected. And to do that, I needed to pass the tool and sub-program information on. And so I'm doing that with attributes. So these were written at the same time I just ran that uh, little journal there. And you can see it's kind of like a pseudo array because uh, that's what the, the post processor can read. So here I've got the, the diameter of my tool, the name, uh, the tool number, and very importantly, the subprogram that's associated with that tool. And it goes on down for each one of the tools. There's one other attribute it writes. I'm going to adaptive milling here. And it writes an attribute named regrind op and makes that true. And the post needs to see that because, sure, it has all this information about the, the tools, but it needs to know which operation to not post out, but rather just link via a subprogram. Let's test our result. We'll post-process. First, I'll regenerate this last operation. And we'll choose the post-processor that I've modified to deal with that attribute information that I just showed you. OK, so right at the top, we see a table that I've created using that tooling attribute information. So I've just listed it all here in columns, and I've added something that I'm calling the pound 600 key. This pound 600 is the FANUC variable that I'm using to keep track of which tool it has is being used for roughing. So right now, here's pound 600 equals 1 uh, with key 1. That's our nominal tool. It's tool number 4, half inch diameter, and we expect that it's going to run sub-program 1. And how does it figure this out? 
Here it's just the FANUC macro language conditional logic. So that if it equals 1, 2, 3, or 4, we jump to 10, 20, 30, or 40. Now, none of this stuff is hard coded. The, uh, the post processor is literally just looking at those attributes that come in, and then it is uh, creating this on the fly. Okay, now let's go down past the first operation, and here's our adaptive milling. So the, the face mill, of course, that's just posting as we would normally expect, but we get to adaptive milling, and here it's saying it's going to do a roughing subprogram call. It then does a tool change using 601, which is assigned up above, and then it's calling G65602. So just to review, uh, 601 is being assigned here as tool 4, 602 is program 101. Then after that's complete, uh, we go on to the finish pass at the very end. And again, that's just coded normally. A better test then might be to run simulation and make sure that all that logic in the FANUC macro, macro language works the way we think it will. So let's attach a machine and do that. Okay, this is a horizontal. I'll hide one of the components here so we get a better view. And then we'll begin our simulation from the top level. Double checking to see that, I, in fact, I am in machine code based simulation. And the next thing I want to do is bring up the program manager. The reason is I need to make sure that it can find those subprograms. Now, I've run this before, and I've already assigned them. And in fact, as I come back into simulation, it still sees those addresses. Here you can see the uh, first part of our program appearing. Reassign some of this a little bit. OK, there's, there's a little more space. So here's our logic, and we'll just start stepping through this. Our key is set to 1, so our expectation is that here it jumps, because 600 does equal 1, so it goes to 10, assigns those two variables, and then it's go to 110. Okay, so it appears to be working correctly. At this point, then, I'm going to just hit the play button, and let's work through that first tool. Okay, here I'm going to slow things down a little bit. And here you see that it did uh, change tools based on that variable value. And now we just entered into the subprogram 1001 as we expected. Double checking down here, the current tool is the uh, uh, EM500, that's our nominal tool. So now we're roughing using the subprogram. I'm going to stop right there and analyze the wall. My expectation is that there will be about 10 thousandths of stock left. And in fact, that appears to be what I'm getting. So that's the correct result. 
Okay, now <clears throat> I'd like to make a change to continue my test. Remember at the very beginning of our program, we had pound 600 set to a value of 1. I'm going to go back to my post and I'm going to change that setting so that pound 600 is now 4, which is the last tool. If you'll recall, that's the tool that we made 100,000 smaller. So I'll save my post. Now I'll reset the machine. <clears throat> okay, let's step through this again. And then finally we get to four and it jumps. <clears throat> okay, so the logic's working correctly. Let's go ahead and play. And <clears throat> here we are. Uh, I skipped right past where it was changing the tool, but now we're in subprogram 1004, and our tool is the Regrind 3, which is the correct tool for this subprogram. So this looks correct. I'm going to stop it again, and let's analyze one more time. Yeah, that's ten thousands. Okay, <clears throat> just to review then, I, I should be clear that I didn't create a product here. This is more of a proof of concept video, and I hope that you found it interesting. I demonstrated the concept here by having each regrind discrete tool have its own tool number, tool position. And that's really not realistic in a production setting. You're not going to be willing to give up four or five tool positions just for one regrind cutter. Uh, but really here I was just after the clarity. I think this certainly could be implemented differently where we just use one tool position. The operator is going to have that regrind reground tool arrive. He's going to set his height offset and still make the variable selection then to make sure the correct subprogram is run, but it could easily be done all off the, the same single tool position. Additionally, it occurs to me that there might be some advantages uh, to doing this over just being able to use cutter comp uh, because of the, the nature of the algorithm that's used for adaptive milling. The ability to set it up exactly for the size of the regrind cutter and then <clears throat> we can make small adjustments to the feed rate and the spindle speed where they can then be optimized for the reground size rather than the nominal size. And of course, this, as we saw, the step over changes slightly also. That concludes the presentation then. We're big advocates of adaptive milling here at Acuity. Uh, but we've thrown this concept out, and we'd love some constructive criticism. If you have some ideas or thoughts, please send them our way. And if we can help you with your implementation of NXCAM, please get in touch with us. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video.